Well, hi there. Thanks for tuning to my YouTube channel. Jose Quiñones, the CNC dude. Uh, moving on to the next uh, aspect of our uh, lightsaber build. I think we have uh, uh, seen enough of the pommel thing, uh, but now there are other lightsaber parts that we can build. And uh, today I want to focus on on this groove, what I call the grooved cylinder of the uh, Luke Skywalker Return of the Jedi lightsaber uh, prop. Um, let me tell you something about this. This part is something you will want to build on a lathe, okay? Can it be done on a CNC milling machine? I imagine yes, but boy, why would you why would you want to do it on, on a milling machine? If it is just because you like challenges and you want to prove to the planet and to the human race that it can be done, hey, by all means, go at it. But the truth is, a part like this, completely cylindrical, okay, round on all, <laughs> on all angles, there is no reason not to do this on a lathe, okay? This is a, a lathe, super duper simple lathe part. You basically chug it up and you just start going, going at it with tools, and that's what we're going to look at it today, how you can do this on the lathe um, in just a few passes. Now, it, it's not a 15 minute part unless, unless you've done like hundreds of them, I guess. It took me a couple of hours, um, even, even when I've done stuff like this before. Um, and actually, I did uh, this one I did like 12 years ago with my previous lathe. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that experience because uh, doing this one was a completely different endeavor. Um, now, I don't have a CNC lathe, which means that this was, this was done by hand. But I want to, I want to uh, change here the concept of by hand. Uh, there are two ways of doing it by hand. Um, this guy was done fully by hand. And basically what, what I mean by that is um, when I chucked up into my lathe, I had to use my dials to measure distance here, okay? Uh, and probably my caliper as well. But to generate all of these features, I had to rely on a manual, on what I want to call manual um, uh, input, which is basically the dials and the calipers, okay? So there was a lot of guesswork, and the outputting here is not very precise. <clears throat> and if you were to measure this, um, you're going to find that the groups are not equally spaced, that the width of these elements are not equally, it's not, it's not, the, it's not the same across the border. Uh, but man, why would you care, right? Uh, this is a prop. This is gonna be seen in, in like far away on the scene. You know, it's gonna be moving like this. Um, there is no way anybody on this planet is gonna be like, oh my God, there is like three atoms out of place in there, right? It doesn't matter. The most a prop like this will ever get is being placed on a museum behind some glass. It's no, you, you'll not, you'll have no chance uh, for people to go with calipers to measure and say, oh man, the, machi the machinist that did this, what a hoax. I mean, look at that. That's not, that's not fairly space, okay? And, um, and you know, this, this is my prop, so most likely this will never see a museum. This will be on my cube waiting for people to come by and say, oh man, did you build that? That is so awesome. That's, that's the most I will ever see. And I assure you, they're not gonna, they're not gonna measure this. Uh, so, if they are not equally spaced, it's not the end of the word, uh, it's okay. But uh, to make this one and this one, I did a different type of manual operation. I'm gonna call this uh, an hybrid manual operation because I didn't use my dials. I used a DRO. Um, that's almost like CNC in the sense that you can hone in the position of your tool, uh, way better than with dials, okay? The dials, the dials work, and that's how it was done before there were DROs. Uh, for hundreds of years, that's, uh, no lathe had DROs. I mean, DROs are fairly, fairly recent stuff, maybe decades, right? I mean, uh, f for hundreds of years, when people were doing cannons and uh, rifle battles, there were no DROs. So the dials were the way to do it, but the problem with the dials is that you have to take into consideration backlash and uh, how, how good are you doing that? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so with a DRO, there is backlash. I mean, the backlash is there, but it doesn't exist because 
for all practical purposes, when you see a coordinate system on your DRO, that's it, okay? That's, that's where you are. You already removed the backlash from the equation, so everybody's happy. So, I still have to move the, the hand, I have to move the handles by hand, of course. So that's the uh, the manual operation. But where I am is way much more precise than if I do it by eye uh, and measurements by hand. <clears throat> so that's why I think this is a, a different style of hand uh, operation uh, than what I did with the handles 12 years ago. Um, so what I want to do is show you how I built this part using um, the DRO and the lathe and a technique that I, I I mean I'm not saying that I came up with this technique I bet there are hundreds or thousands of people that have done this before uh, but what I want to show you is how you can take the drawing from your CAD software and I love I love using the CAD precisely because it allows me to get a drawing which is not done by hand I mean this is basically computer output and I was able to extract the coordinate system so this is almost CNC okay this is almost CNC uh, except that there I am being the co I am the computer here okay <laughs> but I'm still using no numbers to control this thing so uh, it's almost CNC except that it isn't CNC um, uh, but you know, I don't have a CNC lathe, like I said, and I don't see myself having a CNC lathe for uh, for a long time. One, because I really don't have where to put it. Um, unfortunately, I have saturated uh, my two-car garage, and uh, two, because I just don't see myself using it as much as to justify um, a fifteen thousand or twenty thousand uh, dollar expense, you know, if you if you look at guys like uh, Brad from Tactical Keychains, um, you know, he's doing pens, he's doing magnets. This guy has to spew parts. Uh, he, in order to feed his family, he needs to make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of parts. And to make that with a manual lathe, my God, it's uh, <laughs> I wouldn't even bother. By the way, nobody would do it with a manual lathe. They would do it with a turret lathe, okay, a turret, which is something where you can operate, uh, you can uh, automate uh, the operations, and you can make a bunch of parts very fast. Um, uh, and that's how it was done for, uh, I don't know, maybe 100 years. I don't know how long uh, turret lathes uh, have been out there, but it's definitely uh, much more than CNC lathes because CNC lathes are fairly recent, maybe 20, 30, maybe 40 years old, uh, the CNC lathe. I don't think it's more than that, maybe 50 if at all. Um, but definitely turret lathes would be the way to make a bunch of parts. But here again, I am making one, two, man, even if I make five, there is no way you're gonna say, wow, five parts, man, you gotta get yourself a CNC lathe. It's not justifiable, okay? And uh, most of the stuff that I do is like that. It's one, and for stuff like this, the precision, man, if, if this is all over the place, who cares, right? This doesn't go on, on, on some kind of a, a, a tool or a, some kind of a, a gadget where uh, people's life, uh, life depends on it. So it's really not the end of the world if this is not precise to the drawing. Um, but, you know, I think at some point in time before I leave this planet, I would love to have a CNC lathe. So that's something that I look uh, forward, maybe, let's say, uh, today is to, uh, January 2nd of 2015. Um, uh, so, by the way, if I haven't said it yet, Happy New Year. Um, uh, but uh, let's say by 2020, I should have a CNC lathe. That's, that seems like a, a decent outcome. Uh, hopefully by 2020, I'll, I also have a larger chop. Okay, so let's take a look at how you can take advantage of your CAD software to generate output, uh, measurement output that you can use with your lathe and a DRO that almost makes it, makes it look like a CNC even when uh, you're doing it by hand. All right, what I have in here is a printout of my um, drawing. Okay, not certain, not certain if you can see that. Um, you know, basically all I want to show you here is that I made a model of the part and I have a bunch of measurements here and that's how you're going to extract the dimensions that you're going to utilize to 
develop or cut your part. So as you can see, uh, this guy is this guy, okay? Now, when you look uh, on a schematic like this, or I guess I should call it a drawing, um, man, it's like so hard to, to, to get anything done just by looking at this. It's, uh, I mean, you can deduce everything, of course, but if we have a computer and we have uh, the means to recreate this drawing with the coordinate system that we need, why bother with this nonsense, okay? Um, I mean, if you, if you have a machine shop and this is what you get, then you'll have to do. But if you are doing the part, why not take the coordinates, okay? So for example, here's what I did. I don't know why this came out shaded like this, okay? I'm, I'm not certain. Um, but look at this, this style of a diagram. This is my zero, and you know I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking like a cam software now, and I am doing the camming myself, um, so that when I use my DRO, I can extract the information from the drawing without without having to do any math. All I do is I go to this coordinate system. So if this is my zero. I move to, for example, I move to point 13, then I move to point 19, point 59, and so on, okay? So, by doing that, you get the actual coordinate that you need to move your, um, your, your compound or your blade uh, on this axis, and bam, right there, you get the feature that you want. Now, I started using this tool. Clearly, you cannot use this tool to cut all of the features because, I mean, let's, fa let's face it, um, there is an angle here, so how can you cut this guy here? It's not possible. And you're, you may be thinking, what, what, if, what if you turn the tool like this? Well, remember, you, want, you don't want to move your tool because once you say this is zero, uh, if you move this guy, now you lost all of your DRO reference. So what you're going to do is you're, you're going to take a piece of rod, and you're, you're just gonna do little marks on zero, whatever you're gonna call your zero, then you're gonna move to your next one, and you're just, you're just gonna make little marks, okay? And uh, that's how you can visually know where to, where to uh, trim, or where to uh, face into. Now, for these features, uh, these groups in here, I just use the tool as it is. Bam, bam, bam. And you know, you know how deep you want to go. So the DRO will tell you also how deep you want to go. But these other features, I just mark them up. Little lines, okay? Little lines. And then I use our respective tool to make the shoulder like this guy here and uh, you can use a tool like this to to cut into into the fissure and if, if you're running out of a space I have found that a cutoff tool works very nicely as, a, as something to make groups This may not be the right way of doing it, but again, this is uh, this is not a space age technology. This is just a prop. I mean, I guess you can say this is a space a space age technology because it's a lightsaber and this is a, a a sword from a space saga. But not really, not yet. Maybe in a couple thousand years when the Jedi's are real. <clears throat> yes, I can say when the Jedi's are real because there is a bunch of out there expecting the zombies were, uh, will one day be real and I completely feel that uh, Jedi's are way much more possible than zombies. <clears throat> I guess it depends on when you were born. Um, so to make this humongous cavity you would stop, start by drilling and then you use, use a boring bar to remove the material. Okay but the trick the trick in here is to um, to realize that if you get a drawing with the coordinates, then you can use your DRO to take your blade where you want it, and then you can carve the fissures 
uh, without having to use the dials <clears throat> and without having to extract these dimensions from a drawing like this you know all of the information is here okay all of the information is here but you would need to do some math to say where well, from here to here was the distance from here to here and so on assuming that this is your zero point versus in here you have all of the information in coordinates so now you can just go there and get and get it marked uh, in terms of, of these diameters, uh, that that you would you, that you would extract from uh, from here, okay? These diameters you would extract uh, from this kind of drawing. All right. Well, uh, this was a short video detailing the technique that I utilize uh, to make this part from our lightsaber replica. And uh, you know, the, there are, there is a lot of different lightsabers that have been utilized on, on the movies, sparse props, and a bunch of them will have groups or features like this. So, if you were trying to reproduce uh, any of those uh, props, uh, the lathe would be the place uh, to work on it. <clears throat> I just wanted to add that the reason why I have this cavity here. Um, as opposed to when you look at my 10, 12 year old replica where this is basically solid I, I never I never grooved it out so this is just a piece of solid and yes this is very very depressing it's really nothing fancy here <clears throat> uh, but you know I really wasn't trying to to emulate the lightsaber replica where you can see all of the circuitry a lot of people have done that in the past in the past years and um, there's been a lot of uh, traffic on the web on some um, some replica that, that got auctioned sometime uh, a few years ago I think it was like in 2007 and it showed a bunch of circuits and there was some debate as to whether it was a real thing or not um, but um, a few weeks ago I started looking at uh, a replica that um, an individual by the name of the Sloth Furnace at least that's, that's his webpage slothfurnace.com uh, he did a tremendous job and uh, his replica has a bunch of circuitry you can see the crystal and it's light up and it actually has sounds battery rechargeable stuff uh, amazing piece of work so i thought of probably trying to do that as well not certain if i'm gonna go there or how long it's gonna take uh, but i decided to gut it out so if i want to put stuff inside so when you open it up you can see some uh, <laughs> cool futuristic or uh, from another galaxy kind of deal uh, circuitry I can do it okay so um, that's that was my reasoning behind gutting this out but we'll see how that goes and uh, time will tell if I have a, if I have the inspiration and the creativity to come up with my own means of of, of doing that kind of thing okay uh, but anyway that's how you how you would use your lathe uh, to generate parts like this and uh, hopefully you found it instructive if you like feel free to press that like button uh, feel free to subscribe if you think that is a uh, uh, good content that you can benefit from on these videos uh, and yes comment um, I, I, I would like to uh, to get your input on on you know different aspects of this build uh, what you would like to see or uh, recommendations uh, pitfalls that you can recommend others um, so that we can all learn from this experience and uh, that will be all for this video but my next project will be working with this guy uh, and, and right on, on this prop this guy is super lame so there is a lot of work that needs to be done this is probably gonna be the hardest part so I'm gonna work on this next uh, pretty much everything else is done uh, so this is the part that I need to, uh, to focus so uh, the subsequent videos are gonna be on this so there's gonna be a lot of CNC machining for this guy alright well thank you for tuning to my youtube channel and uh, I'll see you next time